Welcome to this talk. It's quite an important one, I think, on vitamin D. And I'm going to be talking about a study which showed that people with higher levels of vitamin D in their blood were less likely to die over an 11 year period. Now, does this mean I can tell you that if you increase your vitamin D levels, you're going to reduce the chances of dying? No, it doesn't mean that. This is not an interventional study. Does this mean that in a study of 37,000 people over an 11 year period, those with higher levels of vitamin D were found to be less likely to die over that period? Yes, I can tell you that. And I think the results of this study are quite significant. Now, the study was carried out on people with existing cardiovascular disease, but I'll give you reasons why I believe that this is applicable to everyone uh, as well. Thinking about this particularly now at this time of year, if you live in Canada, the northern states, northern Europe, as I live in the north of England basically you don't see a lot of sun for a good six months of the year therefore you don't make much of your own vitamin D that's why this is particularly important vitamin D deficiency we know is common amongst the whole population in America Canada northern Europe and uh, and, and the United Kingdom as well we know it's in fact even in southern Europe vitamin D deficiency is quite common because people often avoid the sun now getting on to the study this is the study here Association of serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D concentration. Now, that is the active form of vitamin D in the blood with all cause mortality, that's people dying from any cause, and cause specific mortality, that was people dying from heart disease. And this is amongst people with existing cardiovascular disease. But we'll see that these people were more likely to die from cancer, respiratory disease, and all causes. So that's why I believe this applies to everyone. I think this is pretty important uh, information and it, this contributes towards the vitamin D argument we've been making on this channel for some time having looked at the importance of vitamin D for immunity for example we're now looking at it for all cause mortality. Now it is an observational study it's not interventional but there again you don't really get large-scale interventional studies on vitamin D because large-scale interventional studies are mostly carried out by drug companies who want to make money on a product and vitamin D is so cheap and it's generic you can't make money on it. So unfortunate but that's just the way it is so we're largely dependent on these observational studies but this is a large-scale uh, good quality observational study. Now the background here is that vitamin D levels, um, low vitamin D levels are common in patients with cardiovascular disease as they are with um, uh, in the general population. Cardio heart, blood vessels that supply the heart, cardiovascular disease, CVD. Now this is a study of patients with existing cardiovascular disease but as we'll find out they died more from all causes of mortality as well as just the cardiovascular disease which is why in my view this has got wider scale applicability. Now this study is prospective which is good that they, they recruited the patients then started to follow them up examining the association of the vitamin D levels in the blood with so they're examining the vitamin D levels in the blood with all causes of death and cause specific mortality from cardiovascular disease so they were looking for both and there was a, an association with both indicating that vitamin D is protective. Or, or there's certainly a correlation indicating that vitamin D could well be protective. Now, this is from the UK Biobank study. Now, the UK Biobank study, it's a big study. They recruited about half a million people between 2010 and 2016, I think it was from memory. Unfortunately, I missed that cohort. I'm hoping to get into the next uh, cohort to give my own data. Uh, very interesting study. They take blood samples, they take body mass index, they... Uh, they take blood pressures, ongoing data, that they, they, they send out long uh, questionnaires for people to fill out related to their health. And then they follow them up over a long period of time. It's a longitudinal study. Um, so it's the UK Biobank study. Now, there was 37,079 patients with uh, existing cardiovascular disease uh, in, this, in this study that they've found. Biobank study, it's a pro prospective cohort, 40 to 69 year olds. As we've said, half a million of them. So a pretty good study. This is the UK Biobank site. Check it out. Lots of interesting stuff there. And any researchers, any bona fide researchers who can demonstrate they are legitimate researchers can access this huge database of medical information and mine it for absolute treasures like this. Because even though this effect might not be too dramatic, because it's on a large number of people, you can really see it quite clearly. So it is quite, a, quite an exciting find, really.
So cardiovascular disease, they included coronary heart disease. Coronary arteries are the crown-shaped arrangement of arteries that supply the heart muscle itself, the myocardium with blood. Atrial fibrillation is the irregular contraction of the upper chambers of the heart, giving rise to an irregularly irregular pulse. Heart failure is where the heart can't pump out enough blood to meet the metabolic demands of the body. And stroke is a cerebrovascular accident where there's a disruption, usually caused by a clot in a blood vessel, to part of the brain. <clears throat> so the cardiovascular disease, they're pretty wide definition. Really, the, 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 what they mean here is it would have been better to call that arterial disease. Really, and of, of course, there's an, old say, there's an old saying in medicine that you are as fit as your arteries. So if your arteries in good shape, the, the odds are you are. And if, unless you've got cancer, that's basically true. Anyway, getting straight on to the results. So they had over 37,000 patients with cardiovascular disease at baseline. Now, 57% were vitamin D deficient. So that, of course, meant the rest weren't. So that means you've got two nice large groups. So you've got a big chunk there of 57% of that 37,000 were deficient. The rest, the other 43% or whatever it was, were not deficient. And uh, that means you've got two groups to compare. But the study was even cleverer. Than this. They didn't just compare them. They, um, they, they actually looked at the particular levels and the particular increases and decreases. Uh, we'll see a graph of that in a minute. It's really quite a sophisticated study. So they defined deficiency of vitamin D. So that's the vitamin D in the blood there, the 25 hydroxy vitamin D. And that was defined as less than 50 nanomoles per litre, which is the equivalent to less than 20 nanograms per mil. Just two different ways of measuring it, unfortunately. Now, the medium follow-up here was quite long. So they followed these patients up for a median time of 11.7 years. Because as we said, this is a longitudinal study. Now, during that 11.7 years, 6,319 patients died in total out of the original sample of 37,000. And what did they die of? Well, 2,161 died of cardiovascular disease. 2,230 died from uh, cancer. 623 died from respiratory disease. And 1,305 died from other causes of disease. So we see here that most people actually didn't die from cardiovascular disease. And that's why I believe this has such widespread applicability, because people were dying from cancer, respiratory disease, and the other things that people um, die of. And they found a non-linear inverse relationship. Now, inverse, I'll just point out what that means precisely in a minute. But this was for all-cause mortality, from all causes of people dying. So that included people dying from cancer, respiratory disease, all the other causes, as we mentioned. In other words, that is deaths went up as vitamin D levels went down. And they found that this result was significant. In other words, there were 99.9% sure this was a genuine result. So all cause mortality. Now, what we have here is this is the adjusted odds, what we call the adjusted odds ratio. Now, th this line here is 1. So that line across there is 1. So if I just draw a line across there to indicate that. So what that means is anything above that line is increasing risk of death. Anything below that line is decreasing risk of death. So here we can see that there's a 25% increase chance of death. Here we can see there's a 25% less chance of death. And what we have here is the vitamin D levels. So this is very low levels here, uh, 25, 50, 75, 100, getting up to good levels, 125, 150. So that's increasing levels of vitamin D there. So what you find is that deaths go down as vitamin D levels go up. And these, this shaded area is the error bars. So we find that as... The risk of death goes down as vitamin D levels go up. So what we notice here is this line goes down most steeply at the beginning and then it goes down in a more shallow fashion as we go along to higher concentrations of vitamin D. So what this means is that the risk of death is greatest with very low vitamin D levels. Then as vitamin D levels increase a little bit, the risk of death goes down. So what this would indicate is that people with the lowest vitamin D levels have got the most to gain from supplements.
but people with higher levels of vitamin D levels can still gain a little bit if they increase their vitamin D levels up to these high levels up here. So that was that was all cause mortality. And when we look at the um, approximate linear inverse association for cardiovascular disease, and again, we find that, that that is deaths went up as vitamin D levels went down. Then what happens here is we get a similar pattern here, but this just keeps on going down. It's more linear. So it keeps going down. So where is this line leveled off a bit? That line just keeps going down. So what this means is that the line went down most steeply here to begin with. It's going down nice and steeply there. So that means that the risk of death is greatest with the, um, with the very low levels of vitamin D. Then as vitamin D levels increased a bit, as the vitamin D levels increased a bit, the risk of death went down quite quickly. But then the risk of death carried on going down as vitamin D levels increased. So that's um, fairly convincing data, really. We see there's an inverse correlation. In other words, people are less likely to die as vitamin D levels were higher. Well, just to look at this in another way, amongst patients with uh, vitamin D deficiency, for every 10 nanomoles increment in serum vitamin D concentrations, there was an associated 12% reduction for all-cause mortality and a 9% reduction for cardiovascular disease mortality. So in patients with vitamin D deficiency, per 10 mils, per, per 10 nanomoles per litre increase in serum vitamin D levels was associated with a lower risk of mortality. And this was using an adjusted hazard ratio. And these are what they got. So 88% um, uh, for 0.88 for all causes, 0.91 for cardiovascular disease. This is just another way to look at the same data. 0.9 for cancer, respiratory disease 0.81 and other causes uh, 0.81. So in other words, we see there that all cause mortality was reduced by 12%. And of course, that is per, that is per 10 nanomole per litre increment. So another 10 nanomoles of increased levels of vitamin D will give that benefit all over again. So one of the important things about this study was that they identified that the low levels of vitamin D were an independent risk factor. Now what do we mean by that independent risk factor? Well we did notice that these were what we call adjusted hazard ratios. So these were the hazard ratios but they were adjusted so what were they adjusted for well of course there's many things that we know can cause uh, and contribute towards cardiovascular disease so it's necessary to control for these now this is the bit i don't fully understand i understand the principle but they use something called a multivariate multivariate cox regression model now this is a statistical tool now, um, basically, these days, this is just part of a statistical package. You put all the information in and it crunches it and gives you the answers out. But it has been checked by statisticians, so we do know it is accurate, even though I don't have the statistical expertise myself. But, of course, all of these things here we know are risk factors for, for um, increasing severity and death from cardiovascular disease, all of these factors. So we know that older people are more likely to die than younger people. Younger men are more likely to die than younger women. People with a higher body mass index are more likely to die than thinner people. So they adjusted for all of these. And having adjusted for all of these, they still found that vitamin D was associated. Low levels of vitamin D were associated with increasing likelihood of death. They still found that. So it's quite impressive. They, they, they adjusted for age, sex, alcohol consumption, body mass index, glomerular filtration rate, which is a kidney function, education, ethnicity, household income, smoking status, healthy diet score, diabetes. And the other thing I like about this study is they took into account whether they're on meds for diabetes or not. The HbA1c is the long-term sugar in the blood, so they accounted for that. Duration of cardiovascular disease, how long they'd had it for. Blood pressure, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, the first and the second one. And they accounted for the medications for blood pressure and the lipid profile and the medication like statins for lipid profile, triglycerides, cholesterol and a few other blood markers. So they accounted for all of these factors and still found that the relationship between low levels of vitamin D and high rates of death still stood. That is what they found.
What do we conclude amongst patients with existing cardiovascular diseases, or we can say definitively from this study, that increasing levels of uh, serum vitamin D were independently, independently associated with a decreased risk of all-cause and cause-specific mortality. Uh, these findings suggest that elevated serum vitamin D concentration concentration benefits cardiovascular disease patients with vitamin D deficiency. And the more deficient someone is, the more likely they are to benefit. So this would indicate, or potentially would indicate, that studies in the future would show, if these studies are ever done, that taking relatively low amounts of vitamin D might actually have quite a large benefit because the people with the greatest risk have the lowest levels of vitamin D. And then finally, therefore, patients with vitamin D deficiency may benefit more from increasing serum levels of vitamin D than those with cardiovascular disease and serum vitamin D levels that are already not too bad. But these, these ones, it's so even if the level is 50 nanomoles per litre, which is equivalent to 20 nanograms per mil, as we saw, there is still some benefit in cardiovascular disease, but less benefit in all-cause mortality. And then, in all due modesty, they say, our findings provide novel clues awaiting further validation in, and here they mean interventional clinical trials, but um, it looks like they are not going to be done any time soon. So we're left with this observational data. So this observational data indicates that lower levels of vitamin D are associated with causes of death and all causes of death, as well as just cardiovascular disease. So all I, I can't tell you what to do, but personally, when it's dark outside and it's dark for a long, long time of the year, I personally take vitamin D uh, supplements. Nice guidelines so you can take up to... Uh, up to um, 4,000 international units uh, per day, which is 100 micrograms of vitamin D per day in adults, would be the maximum amount recommended by the NICE uh, guidelines in the UK. So quite an important study, and uh, thank you for watching.